Hey Algebra students, welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be reviewing um, Unit 5 for our final exam. All right, so take a look at the top of your um, review sheet and everything that's written there as a reminder. So in this unit, we started talking about systems of linear equations, okay? So systems refers to just more than one equation, and linear means we're talking about lines. Okay, so we talked about systems of linear equations in this chapter, and we also talked about systems of linear inequalities. So we'll talk about that on the second page. Whenever you're drawing two lines on the same coordinate plane or on the same graph, there's three things that could happen. Okay, so the first thing that can happen is that you can have the lines intersect. And if they do intersect, we consider that as one solution, that solution being the point where they intersect, x comma y. The other thing that can happen is that the lines could be parallel and then therefore they never intersect so they don't have any solutions. So as you start to see when we're talking about solution we're talking about points that they have in common. So if they intersect once they have one point in common, one solution. If they don't intersect ever then they don't have any points in common, no solution. And finally if they're on top of each other we call those coincidental lines. They just happen to be coincidence, the same line on top of itself. And in this case, since they share every point in common, they have infinitely many solutions, infinitely many points in common. Now, when we're actually talking about the system, so the equations, in order for them to have one solution, they have to have different slopes and different y-intercepts. Um, in terms of no solution, in order for them to be parallel, they're going to have to have the same slopes, just different y-intercepts. And then infinitely many solutions happens when everything's the same, same slope and same y-intercept. Now, just really quickly, when I talk about all this stuff, the slopes, right, the intercepts, oops, I don't know why they came out so crooked, <laughs> the slopes, the intercepts, all this stuff. I'm referring to um, making sure that you guys know that we're talking about y equals mx plus b or y equals b plus mx, okay? Where the y-intercept is the number without the x that's not multiplied with the x and the slope is the number that is multiplied with the x, okay? All right, so feel free to put any of this onto your note card or your cheat sheet. Um, but yeah, it's important for you guys to know what a system of linear equations is and how to find its solutions. So let's just start with this first part about like identifying how many answers these systems have, and then we'll review how to solve them algebraically and graphically. Okay, number one, y equals 1x plus 1 and y equals negative 3x plus 9. So first things first, I noticed that the slope for these two equations are different. So the slope of the first line is 1, the slope of the second is negative 3. So as I'm looking at my chart up here, because they have different slopes, that means that they're going to have one solution. Because all the other options for no solution and infinitely many solutions, they would have to have the same slope. So right away, I can tell that this system is going to have one solution. All right, as I start to look at the next one, I notice that the slopes are the same. So since the slopes are the same, remember those are the numbers next to the variable x that are multiplied there with the x. Um, since those are the same, now I have to move on to look at the y-intercepts. Those are the numbers without the variable x. Now, if they had been different, these would be parallel lines. But because everything's the same, that means that they are coincidental. They just happen to be coincidence, the same line. This means they have infinitely many points in common, therefore infinitely many solutions. Okay, take a look at the next one. Same slopes, but not the same way intercepts. So that means these lines are going to be parallel. So just kind of imagine these lines are going up 5 over 2, up 5 over 2. One hits at negative 4, so up 5 over 2, something like this. And the other one hits at positive 6, up 5 over 2, something like that, right? So same slope, up 5 over 2, but different y-intercepts. That makes these parallel 
which means that they will not have any points in common, therefore no solution. Okay, and just by looking at the graph, right, if they're parallel, they have no points in common, so no solution. Be careful because sometimes they, people think that there's two solutions because they see two lines, but remember, solution means um, points in common, and they don't have any points in common. So therefore, no solution. How many points in common do the red line and blue line have in option E? They only have one, so that's one solution. And last but not least, when the lines are coincidental, meaning they just happen to be the same line on top of itself, what a coincidence. That means that they have infinitely many solutions, because look at, they have these, 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 all the points in the world they have in common. So this is infinitely many solutions. Okie dokie, artichokey. Okie dokie. Now, we learned to solve systems using three methods. Graphing, elimination, where our goal was to try to get opposites. For example, we decided to either cancel um, the x's or the y's, and we would try to get like a negative 2x and a positive 2x, so that when we would add them, they would eliminate. Okay, you could also have the y's be opposites, so let's say negative 7y and positive 7y, right, those would cancel. So our goal was to obtain opposites. Elimination is used when the variables are on the same side of the equation or when everything's lined up perfectly vertically. So like the x's, the y's, the equal signs are all lined up vertically. That's when elimination is the best. Substitution is when one of the variables is isolated. What I mean by isolated is meaning that it's by itself. So for example, you're going to be looking for something where it's got like y equals and it's all by itself or x is by itself. Okay, and our goal there was to merge the two equations they, give, they gave us so that when we combine them or merge them, we'd have only one type of variable. And I'll review what all that means in a little bit. Well, technically three choices. You can try to solve by substitution or elimination, um, or you can even graph. So I'll show you all of them and then make sure you watch the video, decide which one you like the best before you commit to writing anything on your paper. So because the y's, the x's, and the equal signs are lined up and so are the y-intercepts of these equations, elimination is a great option. The only thing is we don't have opposites. So what I'm going to do, I see I have a 1y and a pos another positive 1y. I'm going to go ahead and multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. What that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to change all the signs for all these terms so that I end up with negative 1y equals positive 1x minus 5. That is going to allow me to, when I add these two equations, the y's cancel. That's why it's called elimination. So when I eliminate these, boop, adios, y's, I get 0 equals 5x minus 10. And then I just keep solving. So I'm going to go ahead and add the 10, divide by 5. So I get that x is 2. Now once you find your first solution, that's your x value, whoopsies, your x value is 2, you're going to go ahead and substitute that into any of the original equations to find its partner, the y value. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that first equation and I'm going to substitute the 2 into the x. Well, 4 times 2 is 8 minus 5 is 3. So my solution for this problem is 2 comma 3, and that was that's how you do it with um, elimination. Now I'm going to show you how to use substitution if you want. So with substitution, the goal, so elimination, what we just did was to, our goal was to obtain opposites. So you're allowed to multiply the top or the bottom equation by whatever you want so that the x's or the y's cancel.
Now substitution asks you to look for the isolated variable and focus on what it equals. Because what you're going to do is you're going to substitute that into the other equation wherever you see that isolated variable. So I'm going to take this other equation down here and put a little star by it so you know that's the one I'm using. And I'm going to sub 4x minus 5 into the y because guess what? y equals 4x minus 5. So anywhere you see the y, you can put 4x minus 5. On the right side, you're going to have negative x plus 5. So now we continue solving this, plus 1x. So I'm trying to cancel the x's to be able to move them to the other side and combine. And as you start to notice, you should see that our answer is going to be exactly the same as when we did it with, um, whoopsies, with elimination. We get an x value of 2. And then again, you substitute it back into any of the original equations. 4 times 2 is 8, minus 5 is 3. Okay. Um, another option that you could have used is to graph these. So if you wanted to graph these, you could have done, actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. Um, so that first one, let's say, I'm going to color it in blue. Y equals 4X minus 5. Your slope is 4 over 1, and you're starting on the Y axis at negative 5. Then you're going to go up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1, up 4 over 1. Go all the way across, then you can go backwards, down 4 over 1. So you can kind of see here's the line. And then you're going to graph the other guy. So I'm going to make that purple. The slope is negative 1 over 1, starting at positive 5. Down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Remember, it's rise over run or fall over run. And check it out. Where do the lines intersect? At 2, 3. So let's take a look at this next one. This problem, since one of the variables is isolated, which is the y, I'm going to sub what it equals, which is 3x minus 12, into that isolated variable, right, that same variable y, in the other equation. So this is called substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that equation, except wherever I see the y, which was the isolated variable, I'm going to replace it and sub it in with what it equals. Well, what did they tell me y equals? y equals 3x minus 12. So remember, our goal with substitution is to merge the equations into one so that um, you create a new equation with only one type of variable. So once you do that, you can go ahead and finish solving. I'm going to distribute. Remember that negative times negative, so negative 2 times negative 12 is positive 24. Combine like terms. And then cancel using sad map, addition and subtraction first, then any multiplication or division. So my x value is 3. So remember, your solutions are always ordered pairs if, if it actually has a solution. So I've got 3 comma something. Got to find his partner. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute this into um, any of the original equations. I'm going to use the one with the isolated variable, which was 3x minus 12 y equals 3x minus 12. Well, guess what? We just found out that x is 3. That looked kind of squished. So you get 3 times 3 is 9, minus 12 is negative 3. So our solution is going to be 3, negative 3. OK. So now. <clears throat> I'm not going to grab this because I can already just kind of tell that this one, the y-intercept, is 12. So that probably wouldn't fit in the graph, not the way it's given to us. So it's always really important to make sure that you, like, pick the best strategy. 
Now this other one that we did, since both equations were in slope-intercept form, graphing was good. That was a good strategy to use. Here, the top equation, this guy is not even written in slope-intercept form, so I would have to rewrite it in slope-intercept form before I can even graph, and that can take time too. So for this one, substitution works well enough. Okay, let's keep going. So if you notice, that's why the graphs say use if necessary. Okay, so let's see here. We've got um, Desmos Bike Shop is building bikes for the summer, but is limited by how many bikes can be produced due to the amount of materials it has in the shop. So we're talking about two um, types of bikes, a bicycle and a tricycle. So the ones with two wheels, bicycle, bicicleta, by, oh, chips, bicycle, and tricycle. Okay. Now, they only have 21 total wheels. Okay, 21 total wheels. And the bikes, they can only make 16 total bikes. Now look at what they're telling us X represent. X represents the number of bicycles and Y represents the tricycles. So I'm going to look at my limitations here. One of the limitations is about wheels. The other one is about bikes. So that includes the, the bicycle and the tricycle. So I'm going to write two equations, one about the number of wheels and one about the total number of um, bikes. Okay? Okay. Well, for the wheels, what do we know? A bicycle has how many wheels? Two. So for the wheels, it's going to be two wheels per bicycle plus three wheels per tricycle for a total of 21 wheels. That's all they've got. Now the total number of bikes, the bicycles plus the tricycles, they can't make more than 16. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our system of equations.